I'm going to talk, start talking about some of the accessories I, I bought for this uh, this particular uh, M11-9 uh, submachine gun that I bought back in 1990. And uh, back when I bought this gun, uh, I was lucky when I bought these my machine guns in the in the early 90s because that's when the prices were still really low on them. I couldn't afford these now. Uh, I can't afford a lot of the uh, new accessories they have for these guns. I can't afford, like for instance, that that Max uh, that Max 1115 uh, M16 upper that Lage makes. I can't really even afford the slow fire bolts that they made. I was lucky to be able to afford this CFW bolt that cost me $800. This is one of my favorite. This is the this is my favorite accessory right here. Anyway. One of the first accessories I got for this gun was in the stock department here. Now, if you look at this gun, this is the way I got it back in 1990. Uh, I bought it used, and, and at the time, it was it was the cheapest transferable machine gun out there. I paid $350 for this. Two years later, in 1992, I ended up buying a brand new M11-9 right from... Uh, uh, SWD Corporation, and I bought that for $350. I wish I would have bought more, but that was all I could afford back then. Because remember, this was $350, but it also you, all, you also had to pay the $200 uh, fund tax. At least I, I like to call it a fund tax. I think the government, they probably call it the, the, the punishment, the $200 punishment for you exercising your Second Amendment rights. Now, over the years, I've had, over the 30 years I've had this gun, I've definitely got more than my $200 worth of fun out of it. So I want to start talking now, like I said, about the stocks I originally, I got for this gun. Now, when I first got this gun, I loved this stock because I had already bought uh, an original Powder Springs uh, M1045 and the, the, the collapsible stock on that one was terrible. I hated that stock. I hated it almost as much as I, as I hate my ex-wife. That's how much I hated that stock. But this stock, I really loved this stock. Well, I, I loved it at first, but over time, there was a little bit of, of, of seething hatred that sort of got into it that, with all that love. So it was mostly love with a little hate, sort of like being married. But so what I did is, is I wanted to show you what I really love about this stock. First of all, it's so compact. This gun is so compact that some people call this a machine pistol. And I hate people using that term. Machine pistol is a German term that they started using with the first submachine gun ever, the MP18. And MP stands for machine pistol. So every, so what the Germans did is every machine gun that used, that fired uh, pistol cartridges, they called it a machine pistol. In the United States, we call those kind of guns submachine guns. But now, for some reason, some people are saying, well, a machine gun that looks like a pistol, we're going to call a machine pistol. Anyway. That's my little pet peeve there. All right, so this stock is, is really, really compact. It's really so easy to extend and lock in and to, to get it to, to use it. All you need is one, one finger. You just need one finger to, to get this stock open. You just reach here, down, out. Is, is that brilliant or what? And there you got your stock. So here's where the hate creeps in, a little bit of hate creeps in. You look at the stock. Yeah, uh, okay, yeah. It, it's got some, it's, you notice it's got a little bit of, uh, of action going on here. It's, 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 a, it's a collapsible stock. When you get a, a, a stock that's made to collapse or even, or even side fold or something like that, you give up a little bit of comfort and maybe a little bit of accuracy for that kind of a stock. There are people that hate this stock and they look at this and they say that, that the, uh, the play in the stock destroys the accuracy of, the gu of this gun. Now for those kind of people, I'm going to tell you that you're not going to go moose hunting with gu this gun at 200 yards. This gun was designed to sweep a room. In fact, one famous guy, I can't remember his name, he used to say that the M11 was the purpose was a perfect gun to have if you got into a gunfight in a telephone booth. Now, you guys out here don't know what the hell a telephone booth is? Google it, okay? I can tell you. So, this is this is the stock. Now, here's the way I would I would use it. You, you put it up against your shoulder and you you try to put your cheek in, and that's cold. This thing is cold steel. It's sort of freezing my cheek up. It's a little frosty on my cheek right now. And you've got this, you got this metal bar sticking in your cheek right now. But yeah, you can shoot it fine. It, and what I like here is this is pretty comfortable. 
Now on the M1045, you got this miserable little thing here that, that's terrible. And I, I hated that. Like I said, like my ex-wife. But like I said, I figured there's got to be something better than this. Because I don't really care if I have, I don't really need the compactness if I'm shooting at a gun range. I don't really need the compactness. I can get a fixed stock for this that would work fine at the gun range. So the first thing I found is this guy right here. This is a nice fixed stock that's fixed stock that's made out of wood. I don't know what kind of wood this is. It might be some kind of birch or something. And this stock was uh, made by uh, by SWD, and they sold it through a company called Cobra Firearms. And because I because I was nice enough to buy a machine gun from them and a suppressor from them, they would send me a nice paper catalog every month. Remember, this was before all the internet crap. And so I ordered this through the paper catalog. I ordered this guy for my M11, and I ordered a bigger one that would fit my M1045. Now, these used to sell, I believe, for about $30 a piece. I added this little hook here, I mean, this little uh, eyelet here, because I would, I would use a uh, what they call an assault sling on my gun, and, it would, and the assault sling would clip into here. This was added by me. I also added a couple of screws here on both of these sides here, because... This originally came with just one screw holding this adapter piece in there. So I just strengthened it with, better with, so with these extra screws. So here it is going in this gun. And you put it in the same way you'd put in your regular, uh, your regular stock. You gotta push the button down in here. Now you're like, you got a little bit of play going on in here, but it's still a fixed stock. And when you actually use it, oh yeah, oh yeah. That's so comfortable. It's not cold. You got nice wood up against your cheek, and it's just just nice and comfortable, nice and nice and strong. I, I got some real good memories about this. I, I must have put thirty thousand rounds of this through this through this gun with this this stock on it. So I got a lot of nice memories for this this stock. Memories. Now, I used this stock for like 25 years, and, and uh, during that time, I've seen a lot of other stocks that other companies like Practical Solutions and uh, the ambiquitous uh, Lage Manufacturing, they came out with stocks that are side folding and back folding, up folding, wherever. They came out with all kinds of different stocks, but the side folding stocks they were selling weren't any better than this, and in fact, they weren't as comfortable as this. They were about as comfortable as this those side folding stocks they were selling, and they wanted like $250 for them. $250! I mean, to me, that's money. Anyway, so uh, I used this stock for like 25 years, and then I, I, I noticed a place, I think they called themselves MLR Distributing Company or some crap like that, and I ended up finally getting this. Oh, yeah. This is nice. This is an adapter for an AR-15 type of, uh, what they call it, carbine stock. And you notice this, this is all adjustable, okay? Now, when I first got this, I, when I tried to put it in the gun, it was too tight, the rail was too tight to fit in there. So I had to take a, a gunsmithing file and I had to file down this, I had to file down this rail so it would fit in the gun. But now this thing fits in this gun like a glove. It's just gorgeous. Watch this. It's just amazing here. Look. See, it's just it's just barely going in. And then you have to give it just a little bit of slap to for it to lock in there. Is that great? I mean, this thing is solid as a freaking rock. And I can adjust this thing for pull. I mean, anyone can shoot this gun now except for maybe Bigfoot or a gorilla. It's great. So here's this, this one right here. And you look through here. Oh yeah. Nice cheek rest, nice sight picture. Nice, real nice. This is now my favorite stock. Now the thing is, is that this adapter and this, this whole stock assembly cost me about 70 bucks. So that's a good, this is, to me, it's a really cheap option for a stock on these guns. Like I said, what I like about this stock is that it, it's adjustable for length of pull. So anyone could fit it, so it could fit anyone. It's adjustable for length of pull. It, if, if you would have bought one of those stocks at side fold that cost $250, you open it up and that's it. It's, it's, it's set for whoever it's set for, you know? So that's my little video on the different stocks I've had on this M11-9. 
Now, next, the next video I'm going to come out with is I'm going to come up with a video on how not to blow your fingers off with this M11-9. That's going to be my next video. So I want to thank my wife for, t for taping this for me. Thank you very much.